So, so we think it's a mixed year. We think the latter part of the year things will get better, but between now and June, uh, things remain tough. You know, our our consulting business uh, growth has has uh, gone into the mid single digits, uh, coming from a place of twenty percent growth. So, so, but we do see it changing as as soon as rates and it's definitive in terms of some of these rate cuts. I think our clients will start to invest more. Uh, I think globally things will change. And this is going to be the balance. It's been the balance the entire time. It seems like that I think some of the equity markets were a little exuberant just before Christmas uh, because I, I do think there's still some time to go. If you had to put your finger on the real problem here, is it geopolitics starting to filter through global economies or is it just the higher credit costs, the fact that that's just tightening the screws on business? I think it's more the high credit costs, um, but I do think geopolitics are playing a role here. Uh, you know, we see our, look, our clients have all been preparing for, for the geopolitics that we live in today. That, that obviously means supply chain changes. Uh, we did a survey of CEOs a few months back, and, you know, 90% of the CEOs said geopolitics are playing a, a role in their plans going forward, including supply chains. Come on. Are we in a high interest rate environment? And, and again, it's part of my panel in about an hour's time. But uh, you and I are old enough. Karen, just about old enough. I, yeah. I always put that caveat in. We're old enough to remember Sometimes. rates like this. And it was the norm. Is it just that they're higher than a whole generation for the last 15 years have ever seen because they're used to central banks trying to take out the cycle and actually hold their hand perhaps a little bit too much and storing up problems? I, I believe in the latter, Steve. I, I do think... Um, you know, today, everything is relative. So, so a generation today doesn't understand 10, 12 percent interest rates, you know, that, that we live through. So everything is relative. Um, but I do think things have to go down uh, in terms of rates for the economies, the global economies, to really churn ahead. I still see big deals being done by companies that have the right kind of profile that haven't been told to gear up to the gills, haven't been told to have enormous debt profiles. I'm going to speak to um, uh, Cisco CEO in a few moments' time. They did a massive deal last yeah. autumn. Yeah. High interest rates didn't stop them because it was the right thing to do. Yeah. If, and, and people say, oh, I'm not doing deals because the markets are volatile. I haven't seen volatile markets. All I've seen is markets go up. No, no, deals are being done, but the volume of deals are way down. And yeah. that's impacting our business as because well. Because a cheap because of free money's disappeared. But then we shouldn't do deals on the base of free money, should we? Well, I think there's also the other factor here is pricing on deals. OK, yeah. so so pricing on deals has come down, but it's come down slowly. Yeah. And so so, you know, in the supply and demand nature uh, of deals, uh, pricing has to continue to come down to spur more deals. Yeah, because it was a guy from Chicago in the trading pit in the 90s who said to me, denial ain't just the river in Egypt. <laughs> and I think there's a little bit of that going on in your industry, too. In our industry, um, you know, deals in general were, were – and look, our in industry is being transformed as well. There are a lot more deals in our industry. Uh, private equity has woken up to our industry. Uh, so they're looking for opportunities in consulting, in accounting firms around the world. And so there will be more deals. Yeah. Can I ask you about U.S. politics? We saw a win at Iowa for Trump so far. And on the mountain here and across and all the conferences we've been at in 2023, all the interviews we've had over the course of last year, the message was that the U.S. is very competitive thanks to the IRA. European CEOs bemoaning the fact that there isn't the same policy in Europe and debating where to put their projects. If Donald Trump is the candidate and if he is elected and becomes the U.S. president again, where does it leave IRA? Is it negative? to the business cycle we've seen in the United States. Yeah, so Karen, so first of all, um, this will be an interesting year. 50% of the global population is going through an election. 60% of GDP is going through the election. That's obviously because the U.S. is going through an election. So there will be a lot of change. Uh, in terms of U.S. politics, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I know Donald Trump did well in Iowa. Uh, I think New Hampshire is going to be a real test. Uh, I think if he does well in New Hampshire, then I think on the Republican side, he's going he's gonna to steamroll ahead. Uh, if some others do better in New Hampshire, I think this might be a real fight. But specifically on the IRA, is he a threat to the IRA and everything that's been achieved in um, policy? I, I think he will be a threat to some pieces of the IRA, yes. Yeah, whoever's um, the next it, president, the, the, the yeah, deficit's are huge. Look at yes, the CBO. The deficit's huge. I think he is going to be... Uh, you know, he's going to have different ideas in terms of how to spur the economy. Uh, some of the items in the IRA are, are not going to be, you know, his policies.